What's up everybody, Ebert42 here, back with some more Madden 16 Ultimate Team. We are doing the top 10 coin making opportunities from Mutt 16. So we're going to get right into it with number 10. Number 10, I have farming solos, specifically the style and the dual style master solos right when they came out. These had some really good reward cards. You got a 92 uh, Tony Romo and a 92 Quinn, and then in this one you got a 94 McCoy and a 94 Mangold, and those cards sold for a lot. So if you got all of the cards to play the solos, you got quite a few coins just from doing these solos. Uh, I have them written down somewhere, but I don't have it on me right now. Uh, and then you could transfer all those players amongst all your farm accounts, and you could end up with five of all of these cards. I did that, I made a couple million coins off of each of these, or well, maybe collectively I made a couple million, because I believe these guys are selling for about 200k each. So I kept two for my team, and I sold four of each, and if they're going for 200k a piece, you know, that's eight, so that's like 1.6 about that I made. Now, it takes some time to do this, so some of them sold for 150 or 100. I didn't quite sell all of them for 200k, which is why I want to say between the two. With the coins that I got from it and everything all together, um, you know, I probably made 3 million coins off of farming these. With those, we also had the, uh, the m overall challenge. That was a great thing to farm once you got your team up to an 98 overall to send your players amongst all your farm accounts and make a quick 500k doing that. So, there's a a lot of solos to farm this year. I think those were the most profitable ones to do. But that is what I have at number 10 for opportunities for making coins in month 16. Alright, so that was number 10. At number 9, I have selling your team and buying it back during market crashes. So most of these market crashes were driven by promos that were released, specifically the big promos like Most Feared, um, the Christmas promo, the RTTP, there was a big crash for that. Superlatives, there was a little one. Team of the Year was a pretty big one. Because uh, there was Team of the Year, Super Bowl, and Ultimate Legends kind of all started at the same time. Uh, but I didn't make a lot of coins off this. One guy that I know that made a ton of coins off this that I want to give a shout out to is JO30. He was always talking about when he was going to sell his team off. He did it live on stream a lot and bought it back during the market crashes. There's a lot of play that has to be done with this, and you have to be able to get online at the right times. So I know Jo's in college right now, and that's a pretty good time when your schedule, you can kind of free it up how you need it to be freed for your classes, studying, whatever. It's flexible a little bit. So when you find out that uh, the Ultimate Freeze program is coming out in a week, you can sell your players, not play for a week, and then once the promo comes out, you can watch the market, and as soon as you notice everything's crashing, you can get online and start looking for your players and buying those back. But a lot of guys were able to make millions of coins doing just this method. If you make 10% off of all of your own players and you have a 5 million coin team, you're going to make a half a million coins every time you do this. So uh, you got to have a lot of wiggle room in that because the auction house does take a little bit. So. It's something where I know a lot of people made a lot of coins doing, and if you're savvy on the market, this is a great way to do it. So that's why I made my list, but it comes in at number nine. At number eight, we have completing sets during the Rookie of the Year promo for a profit. Now, I didn't do any of this. I was very busy outside of the game during these promos and not putting out videos, so I didn't do a video about this. Some of the guys that uh, were interacting with me a lot on Twitter and on Twitch while I was watching streams did talk to me about this, so I got some information out to a couple people about it, but apparently during this promo, you could buy the collectibles, do the sets, sell the players, and make about a 100k profit each time you did that. So you only had to do that, you know, 10 times to make a million coins. So I would rank that as a very, very uh, high opportunity of making coins, especially that late in the season for Madden. So those of you guys that posted about this on my giveaway on Mutthead, or sent me messages about it on Twitter, or messaged me on Twitch about it, thank you for that. But this was a great opportunity to make coins, is watching some of the sets during promo releases. Sometimes people are just going after the players and they don't want to put the time in to do the sets, and so this was the best uh, 
example of that and it was great late in the year to be able to make some coins off of something as well so that comes in at number eight coming in at number seven we have investing in the road signs while they were in the uh, bundle toppers so there was a couple opportunities to do that there were multiple times that this happened throughout the year I did a video on doing this during my uh, week 19 Ebert's investment binder video I talked about this there were multiple opportunities when these came out as bundle topper items they crashed in price significantly you were able to buy them wait a couple weeks and then make huge profits selling these back to the market I wanted to do a shout out to a lot of other things that you could do in a similar fashion, specifically Legends and Ultimate Legends items. It seemed like EA was on a pretty regular release of every other weekend. They were giving you Legends or Ultimate Legends bundles, so you were able to get some items out of those for the sets really cheap on those weekends. And then if you waited about a week and a half and you sold in the middle of the week, you can make a lot of profit off of those as well. So the general theme to this is watching the bundles buying whatever is in the bundle topper, waiting, you know, investing in that, waiting for it to go back up in price. But I think the best example of it with the quickest coin turnaround was these road signs. And I think the most consistent thing that you could do for that was the Legends and Ultimate Legends collectibles. So that is number seven on the top 10 coin making opportunities in month 16. Alright, coming in at number 6, we have flipping the rare 74 overall cards early in the season. I talked about this during my week 3 auction house tip video, if you guys want to go check it out. We talked about a lot of the rare cards um, going that went into these captain sets early on. So this is another thing that you can probably look for in Madden 17 when it first comes out. I talked about the 10 most expensive gold cards. I'll probably do the same thing next year. But this Josh Morgan was so expensive. This card was going for, you know, 100k. Because these 74 overalls were technically available in the silver spots of uh, packs. So when we got like the um, Game Changer packs and the packs that had all these gold cards in them, you weren't pulling these 74 overall rare cards. Same thing for fullbacks. Fullbacks just weren't, they didn't have the same rate in packs. So if we go to the Giants, I know that this Henry Hoynoski early on was a really good card to flip. Oh, I got the wrong Giants set here. Uh, this was another one of these cards that went for, uh, where's he at? You know, 100, 150, just a crazy amount of coins early on in the game. Because it was a rare card, uh, people were hoarding it, marking up the price on it to balance out these sets. So that is number six. It is flipping the rare 74 overall items early on that went into these captain sets. Alright guys, we are now into the top five and coming in at the number five position. Uh, we have another investment. Guys, investments were really good this year. Uh, they were a great way to quickly get some items, not have to do a lot other than play some games and then sell them later. Uh, the quick flip tips that I had, we have a couple of those in the top three that were fire, but they did involve a lot of time. So we're going to get some more of these investments in the top five. And at number five, we have investing in rare elite items for the positional hero sets. Great example of this is this Luke Keekly item. You can't even find any right now. They're selling for 200K plus. There were a lot of these that we could do. I talked about a lot of these in my week 28 Ebert's investment binder video. I brought you guys onto Mutthead. I showed you how to search Mutthead to figure out what guys we thought it might be for the future sets. I did hit that Shazier pretty hard. Uh, I want to say I hit some cards for left guard. I want to say I hit a strong safety, a tackle, some ends, a wide receiver, a cornerback I hit as well. So we hit quite a few when we were talking about these later on. There was a lot, a lot, a lot of coins to make off of these sets. I believe it was a Calvin Johnson in this wide receiver one that 
um, jumped up just a ton. But there's a lot of cards that jumped a ridiculous amount during these positional hero sets, just like they did last year and just like they will again next year. So that was number five, was investing in the elite rare cards, uh, base elites, and RTTP elites for the positional hero sets. Alright guys, coming in at number four, we have the Schefter's Stars Gold Player items. These things were mad coins all year long. Every week it was the same thing. The newest one would be available in packs, and then I forget what day it reset on. I want to say it was like Thursdays the new ones came out. So then on Thursday, Shazier would come out of packs and Shaq Thompson would go into packs. Then you'd wait a week, so you'd buy a bunch of these Shaziers on like Wednesday, and then you'd wait a week, Thompson would go out of packs, and uh, Hearns would come into packs, and by that point the Shaziers would go up a lot. You had a four week window to complete these sets, so you would wait until uh, you know the next card came out, Bortles came out, now that Shazier would spike even more because it hadn't been in packs for three weeks, but people were still trying to do the sets while it was out. I talked about these in a lot of my videos, but Shazier I talked about in week four auction house coin tips, Gurley I talked about in week 10 Ebert's investment binders. There was a lot of these cards that you could make coins off of. You could pretty much do this every single week. The Zadarius Smith was another just crazy one that you could make mad coins off of pretty much every single one of these cards followed that trend. I know Cougar Rob talks about how he made about 8 million coins doing exclusively this before Christmas. So, so many coins to make off of this, guys. The only reason it didn't make my top three is because it took time to do this. All of my top three coin making tips that I'm gonna go over, you can make a million coins in either a day or two or more. So those are all crazy, so make sure you stick by for those. So before I get into the number th uh, top three, a couple honorable mentions. There was a Christmas promo leak, so a lot of guys were able to get in. Um, I know one of the specific things I heard is you could buy the ones that were uh, like seven pro pack bundles for really cheap and then sell them for more later. Um, there, were, there were a lot of other great coin making opportunities that a lot of other people talked about and I did a lot of other videos on YouTube as well. Um, so shout out to all of those things, flipping a lot of collectibles, flipping most feared players when they enraged, uh, flipping Christmas ultimate free stuff while it was out. Any, all the promos really had good opportunities of making coins. However, a couple of them were better than others, specifically because they changed around the way some of these sets were done. So a lot of these we were able to do wildcard sets, and I showed you during the Super Bowl how you were able to search on here for things like um, IV and uh, like VII, some weird sorts like this that really let you dive down into the auction house and pick out some specific things on here as opposed to just searching for like um, all the collectibles like this. Uh, I deemed this hacking the auction house and I made I made a million coins off of this in under 24 hours. So I talked about this in my Mutt 16 week 22 coin making quick flip tips video. So if you guys want to see what was going on during that, you can go check that video out. But the gold ones um, and the elite ones, there were so many coins to make off of these. It was most excellent. It was, it was just super awesome. And all you had to do was just sort the auction house properly. Because a lot of people didn't know that you could sort the auction house and find those items. You just went on here, you buy 20 of them, you go post them, you'd sell them, they'd sell in like 20 to 40 minutes and then you'd do it again. And I was hopping around on my farm accounts and doing this and oh man, it was just all the coins you wanted as long as you wanted to stay on and do it. So that was number three. Number two, we have flipping the superlative collectibles. And guys, this was really the same way. Um, you were able to sort I can find these. 
you were able to sort these uh, by name very specifically and find what one, uh, find cheaper ones than other people were just on here generally searching for. So I made, again, over a million coins flipping these. You guys can check out week 20 coin tips where I talk about flipping these superlative collectibles and making millions of coins in a weekend doing this. So the, those both of those methods, a ton of coins in a weekend, nothing else that I've talked about in the top 10 quite compared to that, um, and the amount of coins that you can make in such a short amount of time. So coming in at number one, my number one opportunity for making coins in Madden 16 is not most feared. It was badges. It was specifically elite badges. And it was during a specific time. These things you can see now are going for 10K. And when I was talking about investing in these, they were also going for 10K. If you guys are fans of Toke Nasty, you're gonna know exactly what I was talking about. And that is right before Road to the Playoffs promo came out. Toke said, invest in these on October 30th. These were selling for 11.5k according to Mudhead. Toke started pumping these. They quickly went to about 15k on Mudhead. Then on November 10th, actually on November 9th, right when the RTP stuff dropped, these things spiked up to 25k. On November 10th, they were at 22k, and they held that 20k for at least a week or two. So if you had a million coins and you spent them all on elite badges at 10k and you turned around and sold them all for 22k you could have had two million coins you could have made a million coins like that in like two days and to me there was no other time in madden month 16 where you could just dump a bunch of investments wait two days and then bam just reap the rewards off of these you could make more coins off of these than the Schefter Stars quicker, and it was it was the most guaranteed thing. It happened last year in Madden 15, it happened this year in Madden 16, and guys, guys, it's going to happen again in Madden 17. So keep your eye out for when Road to the Playoffs comes out again this year. It was November 10th last year. I believe it was around the same exact time. And make sure you get in on some of these elite badges before that happens. Bam. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Appreciated having you guys all here. Like I said, if it's your first time, make sure you hit the follow button in the bottom left. Uh, check me out. I'll have a set schedule. I'm looking at wanting to stream Sunday night, Monday night, and Thursday night uh, once Man 17 drops. So doing a lot more gameplay, a lot more frequent coin tips. We'll be doing Market Mondays is what I'm hoping for. Um, Thursday we'll do a little prep for the weekend and some, uh, some gameplay, and then Sunday we'll just be doing some gameplay, getting some stuff ready for the Market Monday stream as well as always guys uh, appreciate all the support thanks for stopping by big heart and we will catch you guys next time